Speaking of ridiculous things that Microsoft has embedded in their operating system to push their other stuff, like we are we are getting super we are getting super close to antitrust Microsoft time again here. I think um, I was uh. not aware of this. Did you know that there is a dedicated Windows shortcut key or a dedicated Windows shortcut to open up LinkedIn? Oh, uh, that's what I was going to troll you with. Oh, okay. Yeah, someone the, posted it in chat. There's a lot more than just that, actually. There's like, um... yeah. So check check this out. Check this out, guys. Uh, we're going to Linus laptop. Okay, hold on, hold on. No, no. Wait, we can look at Control Alt Shift Win L. Opens LinkedIn. Opens LinkedIn. Wait, There's also really? key combinations for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Teams, OneDrive, OneNote, and Teams. You don't need a you don't need a shortcut for Teams. You need a anyways. shortcut to make Teams go away. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, man. If the, I don't annoying. know if there's anything that makes me more angry. What about when it forcibly logs you out and then you can't even minimize it because it keeps forcing its thing up? Yeah, yeah, that. So you're like working on something important and it, it logs you out randomly in the background and you have to go through its entire login process or, it'll, or else it'll force itself to the front of screen. It is amazing. Remarkable <laughs> how bad that design is. I also just don't really understand why it logs me out. We've, mm. we've looked into it. You can't configure it to not do that. Mm -hmm. It'll log me out while I'm literally in the middle of using it. I... I was on a Teams call today, hung up, and then it logged me out. I find... I, like, I find the approach that some services take to security very confusing. Like, if you're going to make the argument that I should be signed out every month because... something, then fine. Okay. Well, do it on my phone and on my laptop and on my desktop. But then you have something like uh, Gmail, for example, which logs you out. I'm, I'm trying to think. Man, it says every month, but I swear my work computer is way more often than that. There's no way that that only comes up 12 times a year. But on your phone, never logs you out. And you could kind of go, okay, well, yeah, but you've got, you know, biometric authentication on your phone or whatever. But I'm sitting here going, well, yeah, but I have biometric authentication on my computer. Which one's more likely to get stolen? Just check, yeah, which one's more likely to get left in a coffee shop? <laughs> yeah. At least have some consistency to this. And there's no consistency between the various tech giants. I mean... Okay, WhatsApp, a great example. For years, Facebook would allow you to leave WhatsApp signed in perpetually on your phone, but wouldn't allow you to have it signed in or cloud synchronized with any other phone. Now they do that and just, you know, I don't know, why'd you change that? I don't know, not sure. Uh, but on the computer, would log you out like all the time. Like I think it would stay logged at seven, 14 days or something like that. And then meanwhile, you've got something like Teams that logs you out on your phone all the time instead of just being like, oh yeah, no, no, the phone is the single source of truth that you know you can use to authenticate your other devices. And then you know Google's really funny because they'll sign you, I'm trying to think of what, no, they don't sign you out of anything on your phone, but they are constantly signing you out on your computer. And then I'm trying to think if there's anyone that doesn't, that never signs you out on your computer. Um, can't, think of, can't think of anything Steam. right now. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's one. And it's, it's like gaming stuff. No, no, I can't think of any productivity, like work productivity style apps that don't log you out. High value accounts though. Steam, like the, the value of my steam account compared to oh, yeah. like my stupid throwaway hotmail account or something, <laughs> which by the way, no hotmail, you can tell to never sign you out. Oh, well, your cause your windows account is, uh, is tied to your computer right? or your, your, uh, your windows live. So yeah. it's like, it's, it's flipping arbitrary. So on my computer, if it's my Microsoft account that I use to log in for authentication, I can stay signed in perpetually. But on my phone, where it's, tra where it's managed by my organization, and if there was ever a problem, we can just recover it, no problem. You have to sign me out every 30 days. Like it, the whole thing is completely arbitrary. <laughs> Nobody agrees. Yeah. Ah! You want to hear an interesting one? Yeah. Recommended by password managers, people are starting to store their 2FA in their password managers. And there are security arguments for this. No. From That's not what to do. Password managers what? and security researchers. What? Yeah. Hold, okay, you're going to have to... Okay, back, back me up. So people... Oh, hold on. A big, people are storing their 2FA backup codes yeah. 
in their password manager. Yeah. But now we're back to just one password again. And that was a pun. Yeah. It's not a pun, but it's a, it's one funny. One password actually does recommend this. No. <laughs> a, a, a like surprising amount of other people do this too. It's interesting to me. The uh, One of the big arguments for it is... There's just no point in not, because if they have this, they have that. And I was like, hmm, a kind of interesting argument. Because like if, if someone gets into your password manager, do they really not also have your 2FA? Uh, they might just have the one 2FA. I mean, one of the ways that people commonly get past 2FAs is by spamming login attempts and then like calling you in the middle of the night and you know trying to get it or whatever else like while you're groggy and stuff like they could social engineer one 2FA away from you without having access to your 2FA account so what no i what actually the, what they're saying is if they if they had the if they had access to your password vault yeah they may as well just have access to your 2FA but they don't because i don't store that password in my password vault your password for your 2FA? Yeah, I have it memorized. Yeah. See, this is why I don't like it. But this is like actually an argument that's being made by like smart people, which I find very interesting. Uh, sort 2FA in. Let's see. Now I'm sad. They even tell you when they give you the backup codes. They're like, write this down, print it out. That's what you're supposed to do. Backup codes are not, those are different things. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying that people were putting the backup codes. Well, in some people do manager. that too, but that's that's not. I don't think that in particular is recommended. Just the two FA. So you can you can have like rolling two FA, but then the password for it is in your password manager. That's so stupid. Yeah, like you can literally have it to the point where when you when you go like oh fill my login info for this site, it'll fill the login and password, no. and then when the two FA no. comes up, it'll just automatically no. fill the two FA, and then you're fully logged. No, in. I I hate the tedium of. 2FAing as much as probably anyone. I and kind of, one of the reasons why I'm bringing this up is I yeah. want people to like yell at me about why it's fine because I don't really get it because it doesn't seem fine to me. No, it's not fine. Yeah. I strongly disagree. Yeah. No, no, uh, poll? We really have to poll this, you guys? I, yeah. I, well, oh, yeah, fine. I'll do, I'll do a poll. Uh, safe to store 2FA password in your password manager. So is that, is that what we're asking? Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. I, hmm. uh, guys, I don't know, man. Okay. Let's, let's bring up the results. Results time. Yeah. No, there's like 10%. Oh, oh, oh it's swinging. It's swinging. The people who were very angry about this were super quick to click no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shoot. It's, uh, oh, it's, it's covered a little bit. Is it broken? There you go. <laughs> Got that fixed for you. So it looks like Good. by the time the dust settles, anywhere between a quarter of you, probably about a quarter of you, think that it's totally fine to store your 2FAs in there. It's definitely more convenient. It's definitely more convenient. Yeah. And, I mean, if you gave me the option... You know, 10 years ago, when we were just getting into the idea of biometric security, if you gave me the option to have a setup like this, where I have to memorize one password that I just enter all the time, or if I have to start, like, entering my fingerprints and, you know, retinal scans and iris scans and facial scans into every electronic device in my life, I, I, would, I would probably have taken this path, even with all the compromises. Here, check this out. Like this is this is where like, man, I find this so interesting. Here's an article on blog.onepassword.com. Right, and there are other. I'm just using them as an example. There are other password vault, password storage, password security sites that say the exact same thing. I'm just using one password as an example because this is the first one that I found. You've probably heard or read the advice, turn on two-factor authentication everywhere it's offered. After all, it's a great way to add an extra layer of protection to your online accounts. But should that include your 1Password account? The short answer is no. Wait, that's a completely different thing. This is this is a different thing. Wait, what? They're saying not to turn on two-factor authentication also on no a password manager? It. We need to unpack what 2FA does and how your data is protected by 1Password security model. 
This isn't the article that I meant to bring up, but it's what? like there's still there's okay, hold on, so hold on. many hot takes in the one password. Hold on, blog. Hold on, what? No, uh, sorry. I, I, I can, can. I, how is it secured by design? Okay, you're, you're, you're scrolling. Where really do you want fa- me to stop? I don't know. You keep just. Pointing. I, well, I know I what two factor authentication is, so we can go past that. How is it secured by design? Okay, you choose this password. We don't know it, and it's never stored on our servers. Your secret key is long. So yeah, but that's not what the. Are they high? That's not how. Lit. What the fuck? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here that we is go. terrible advice. Here we go. Manages to obtain an encrypted copy of your data from our servers. That's not. That's not. That's such a. That's such an outlier scenario. That's not scenario one. That's scenario seven. A criminal guesses your account. This, we're not talking about guessing from a new device without your secret key that's only stored on your devices so you don't have to type it every time you unlock one password and your printable emergency key. Wait, isn't that just a second factor then? Well, what they're saying is like, I, I think what they're saying is if you sign in a new location, you have to authenticate that new location. I think that's what they're saying. You wouldn't be able to sign into your account from a new device without your secret key, that piece of information. Okay, okay. so then hold on. One password is just saying they already have 2FA. I guess. This this isn't the page I have yeah. to bring up. I'm going to go find okay, it. Okay, all right. So that's that's fine then because they already have a second authentication factor. I mean, okay, I have uh, I have a remote access um, service that I use that I do not have, you know, 2FA, like I don't I don't have it in Google Authenticator, right? Um, because every time I sign on from a new location, I have to validate via some other means. So I don't need that kind of, but, that's just really misleading because but also recommending against adding additional factors is interesting to me. Yeah, I do see their point that two factors is probably enough factors that you're going to get a notification that somebody's trying to Even sign when in it's static. and you're going to get a chance to deal with it. Um, however, I, wish I, I, could find this article. I disagree that all factors are made equal. I don't think that that should be their default factor even. Um, like their default second factor, something that is static, uh, 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 like a, it's, al- it's almost like a, like a physical key. A physical key can be copied, whereas a key that changes every time you use the lock cannot be copied, and that's how something like Google Authenticator works. Oh. Hmm. I wish I could find it. I know they have an article on this. I found someone talking about the article, but all, I can't find the actual root article. All someone would have to do is have your computer compromised with a keylogger at a time when you are re-authenticating and they could force you to re-authenticate if they had some kind of access to your machine that allowed them to reroute you through a VPN or something. Because then it would appear as though you were logging in from another location. So I know I'm asking for a lot of stars to align, but that's not that far-fetched for someone to have some kind of... For someone to have... If they have some kind of malware on your machine i don't think it's that far-fetched that they could route you through some kind of um remote location and that they could have a keylogger installed i don't i don't think that's like science fiction um this, so this re- this reads different than the last time i saw it i don't know if it's been edited or maybe i'm remembering an article from someone else and just found this one first. So my memory might be skewed, but here's the article. It was linked in, in Flowplane Chat by a, a few different people. Um, but yeah, one password in 2FA, is it wrong to store passwords and one-time codes together? And to be clear, again, one password is not the only company that supports this. They like all do, I think. I'm pretty sure LastPass does. I know Keeper does. And clearly one password does. And I think the other ones do as well. Um, and yeah, they argue that it's like secure and fine. But they also say, you know, the correct choice is the one that works best for you. You apparently okay, so this is apparently the um the the one password um key is only entered when you first set it up. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well then that's not too bad, because they'd have to have the key logger at the time you first set it up. Yeah. They might, though. Yeah, and you might... You could potentially trick a user into entering that. Um, Man. It's not as bad as I thought it was. Not even close. But I'm I'm not a huge fan. And I also don't really like the advice of of not having... Okay, 
I should I should clarify when I say I don't like the advice of not adding multiple factors. I don't mean adding multiple alternate factors. I was dismayed when I realized that the way that Google accounts handle a um, a physical device like a Yubi key, if you don't have your Yubi key and you set up uh, like when I when I initially set it up. I was like, it was at a time when I think we had just had an account compromised or something like that. And I was going like, I want three factors. I want my password. I want my UB key. Oh, yeah. And I want my authenticator app. Some sites worked this way for a very brief period of time. And now I don't know of any that worked. This and what way. I didn't realize at the time was I was adding or factors. Some of them were and. Not and factors. Some were and. Google wasn't. Yeah. I don't know of anything that is now, like I just said. Yeah. But, but for a little brief period of time, when we when we first got our Yubi keys, some sites were and, and that was actually very cool, because uh, if you wanted like hyper security, it felt like you had the you know the the two nuclear keys or whatever. Um, but yeah, now it's just like various ways to bypass the thing. Um, I don't know. There's also I've found a lot of places that accept Yubi keys require two different ones yeah which is like so it's like yes i can use my high security yubikey and i also have to have sms authentication enabled it's cool like, the very worst sick. kind sick yeah i don't know um yubikey has gotten i find with a lot of things that we use it's gotten a little bit less useful over the years uh, because more and more places that do support it require you to have two enabled and Less and less places seem to support it. M4TZESS says, if a keylogger is on your system, you are already compromised. That's sort of true. Because in many cases, you are... Well, the expectation, one of the reasons that you should use autofill with a password manager is that it makes it so you don't have to type your passwords. So if someone has a keylogger, even if they have... Man, even if they've, they've got you good and they have you know remote access to your screen... Um, unless they can also access your clipboard, um, yeah, man, even if they can access your clipboard, the autofill service, I don't believe copies the plain text of your password to the clipboard. So as long as you're not control C, control V pasting your passwords, I, I'm sure there's a way, but it would be very difficult to get passwords, even if you had even if they had your clipboard and even if they had a keylogger and even if they could see your screen because almost every password field that i've seen in the last 10 years just uses asterisks or dots or whatever else instead of actually pasting the text in there one password apparently clears the clipboard after a time delay uh as far as i know it just edits the html doesn't copy your password yeah Yeah, all right. Quinoj says, be careful seemingly giving security advice. Uh, I think what we're saying is fine. Yeah, what? We're saying that having more factors is good. And if they're strong factors, then that's better. Yeah, what, what I'm questioning is some people yeah. talking about how you can... My whole thing is I'm just very unsure about the idea of storing all of your two-factor in one application. The main argument I'm seeing around it is, in general, if someone is going to have access to this thing, they probably have access to your whole device, um, and that device is usually described as a phone. Um, remote desktop plus autofill plus developer tools equals compromise without 2FA. Yeah, there's lots of different... Yeah, there's tons of different attack vectors. Yeah. Um, I just question the idea of reducing the layers because it feels like reducing the layers. And I understand some of the arguments. Like, okay, if they're literally in your phone, then they already have it anyways. It's like, well, I don't know. I don't know about that. Because, like, the things that I hear getting compromised more often these days are computers. And I never have my two-factor authentication stuff on my computer. I know some people do, but I don't. Like, I never run How Authy. Do do that? Some people run Authy in their browser. Really? Yeah. Oh. I don't do that. Okay. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. That just, I mean, 
Man, man, I'm trying to think. Is this is this like a is this like a subconscious bias, or does this have a basis in reality? I just kind of think. I've of, always wanted the separation. I think of Windows computers as just like kind of probably compromised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> am, I, yeah. Am I just buying into the Apple messaging? <laughs> like, I don't know. I, well, yeah. I do too. So I don't know. Like I, I don't want to be in a position where my computer is the sole portal to any account. But I mean, in some cases, you can't really avoid it. But I don't, I don't like it, and I, I do try to avoid it. Um, hmm. Chaoui says uh, you should disable autofill in your password manager settings because they can autofill malicious password boxes. Manually paste it every time instead. I do that, to be clear. This is one of those but things But I disable where... autofill because I find keepers at least is oh, so I bad. Oh, I just find it doesn't work very well. That it, it, it'll it also just like aggressively take over certain things or it'll decide that the wrong box is the right one and it, will, it won't let me progress on the website because it keeps trying to spam into the wrong box, which is really bad. Oh um, yeah, okay. That's a that's a that's a that's a very interesting attack vector. Um, <laughs> and security is just such a such a myth, man. <laughs> uh, either way, having a second factor definitely not a bad thing. Putting it all in one place, I'm just not sure if I can agree with that. I think that's really the bottom line for me. Um, SMS needs to completely not be a thing for for 2FA. Uh, 